not saying you have to love football. We all have different likes and dislikes, people. Personally, I'm not a fan of the avocado. I just don't like the mouth feel. But, but if you're someone who loves football, I mean, truly loves it well, my sportsbook app might be the greatest thing that has ever happened to you. Must be 21. Gambling problem? Call, text, or chat on confidential and toll-free helpline at 1-888-532-3500. So we're here at Marshall's with Liz for some holiday shopping. She's really nailing it this year, isn't she? Oh, yep. She's got a record player for Amy. A gorgeous cozy sweater for Jason. And some hot pink fluffy slippers for her sister. The perfect gift. Wait a sec. <gasps> She's getting a pair for herself. Well, with prices this good, it would be rude not to. You know what? She totally deserves it. Oh, totally. Happy holidays, everyone. See you at Marshall's. Fabulous brands. Feel good prices at Marshall's. You know what? I'm too lazy to input loud, uh, sound effects because a lot of the time they are loud and they are difficult to deal with. And then I want to get in and do the echoes and do the delays and make it sound epic. But you know what? Fuck it. I've done my own. I even chopped up my own as well, but I'm too lazy to put them in a keyboard and trigger them. But anyway, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who has taken... On average, six minutes out of their day each week to listen to my podcast. I know it's not the longest podcast. You know, it's probably one of the most shorter ones on the market. But thank you. And thank you to everyone who sent me feedback. I've received some texts, some DMs, people rolling up on me like, Yo, yo, that what, that podcast, big man. <laughs> I don't know why people talk like that. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, thank you. And you know what I've done today? I don't know why I didn't do this earlier, but I faced my mic, so I'm looking out the window when I'm recording. Shit. It feels like I'm in a... I'm like... Do you know when the president stands up? I'm talking about the president of the United States here, because the prime minister doesn't have, like, this big inaugural um, address. He just pretty much stands outside his front door on Downing Street and just talking away to the clickety-click of cameras. I digress, I am back, but I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who's taken the time to listen, share it with their mates and whatnot, you know, I'm not the best at sharing shit, I just wanted to get in, do this podcast thing, upload it every week and bounce, but I'm beginning to warm to it, you know, it's taken me 10 years to get here, now I'm here, I ain't going nowhere. I was going to do that in one of those American voices. And then I was like, I'm not American. And I was like, fuck it. But anyway, without further ado, let's get on with this show. Yo fam, what's good, what's poppin'? Yo fam, what's good, what's poppin'? 0800, yo fam, whatever in it. Yo fam, what's good, what's poppin'? Yo fam, what's good, what's poppin'? 0800, yo fam, whatever in it. 0800 yo fam what's good what's popping ah this one is crazy because one thing i can't take in life is a disgusting clammy handshake there's nothing worse i know that bad breath and body odors are two major social interaction turnoffs not to mention trying to dodge someone's spit when they speak to you but a clammy handshake is by far the most disgusting. Reason being, it's physical, textured and sensory. Imagine my face when I'm in a situation where I can't sanitise my hands immediately afterwards because it isn't considered to be the most polite thing to do. I try everything to hold it together. I can't let my facial expressions run loose to reveal my inadequacy because, let's face it, I'm a self-confessed germaphobe. You stand face to face or sit across from each other. The clammy-handed culprit talking and talking as if nothing had happened. Oblivious to your inner monologue of internal meltdown. As having perfected your poker face, nod along like you aren't consciously trying to avoid touching any of your personal items. Regardless of how many times your phone rings, triggering the watch on your wrist and your iPad in your backpack, you're powerless. 
The fingers you've paired with Touch ID are all on contaminated hands, so you can't unlock anything with the left. Well, not that you can't, but you choose not to, or even touch the watch because it sits on my left wrist, and unless I was some sort of Mr. Fantastic, I can't exactly bend my finger the opposite way to touch the screen. There's no antiseptic gel in sight. As we're not in a hospital or a place where you'll find a dispenser, but I do have a wet wipe from last night's seedy 2am trip to the local Morley's. How would I reach inside my backpack if we're in the middle of a conversation? Is there a polite way to offer someone a squirt of antiseptic gel as if you would a mint? Would a Morley's wet wipe even suffice? It probably wouldn't leave you feeling any better, but it's a great start. It has a citrus scent and an artsy lemon logo on the front with a retro pin up front. It stings the skin slightly on first contact and there's times when I don't know whether it's melting the skin or a byproduct of the germs being taken out by the antiseptic Microbe X. I won't explain, but it made me wonder why I left the travel bottle of scented antiseptic gel in my partner's bag rather than return it to my backpack. I feel like I may have to cut this stop and chat or disappear from the session on a slide just to sanitise my hands. It's not like there's anything significant to be said outside of random generic small talk. You know the restrictive code type of communication convo. Word to Basil Bernstein's theory of coded communication between participants of culture and outsiders restrictive and elaborate. Me. Yo fam, long time brother, what's been going on? Him. You know what fam, same old thing, just grinding. Me. Seen, okay, I hear that fam, gotta get that P in it. Him. You're done already brother, are you still on the music thing? Me, I die inside of that cringeworthy question before answering. Here and there, him. Have you got beats and studio car? Man got a couple man them that are on this thing. Me. I've got a few bits I can send. Him. I know you got them bangers fam. Me. Say fam. Man's got a bounce. So let's catch up on the rebound. Bless up. Once out of sight I ripped open the wet white packet like my life depended on it. Who knows. Maybe. Him being on the grind all day every day, people involve themselves in a lot of dirt. They handle a lot of money. Same goes for people I meet at work or in transit. I hate touching bin lids and handles, not to mention putting my hands in communal packets and bowls of snacks. Along came Polly is partially to blame. Maybe I should register a knuckle or two for this type of scenario. Maybe I should create a mini antiseptic fluid bottle attached to a carabiner belt clip like the sriracha sauce. So as soon as the clammy handshake arises, I can sanitise my hands on a sly. As far afield as these ideas sound, I'll try the knuckle on touch ID because at least the fingerprint identity sensor can still register the electric pulses. I did actually manage to add my knuckle to my registered fingerprints after a whole lot of hard work, so I'm ready for the next clammy hand that comes my way. To be honest, since I wrote that, Face ID come along and it's a lifesaver. But... I don't like clammy handshakes, like I said, they are sensory, you can feel the moisture in someone's hand, plus you don't know what is seeping out of their skin, also you don't know what's going on inside their body pushing shit outside of the skin and it's touching yours and it can affect you with shit. How many people have you seen in a public toilet that go to the toilet and don't wash their hands afterwards? So imagine that, you've got someone's dick sweat or bum sweat, like shaking your hand. When they've picked their nose or like picked the stuff out of their teeth and then it's all over their hands and they haven't sanitised and it, oh, I can't even think of a worse thing. Well, there's that and then someone talking and the spit landing on your hand and just dying inside and waiting for them to finish so you can scurry into the back where there is hand sanitizer. Sometimes, like, I wonder if the hand sanitizer or the foam thing works. Like, is it really that effective? 0800 Yo Fan, what's good? What's popping? Yo Fan, what's good? What's popping? Yo Fan, what's good? What's popping? 0800 Yo Fan. Whatever in it, yo fam. What's good? What's poppin'? Yo fam. What's good? What's poppin'? Oh eight hundred, yo fam. Whatever in it. At Capella University, education is as smart as the world around us. With the FlexPath format, you can take classes at your own pace, set your own deadlines, and even leverage your previous experience to move faster. 
Now that's smart. Learn more at capella.edu. Hey, which glasses look better on me? Oh, what's this? Zenny's 3D virtual try-on. Pretty cool, right? Hmm. Uh, I don't know about the purple cat eyes. I think they're fun. What about these tortoiseshell glasses? Or these rimless sunglasses? Oh, what about these clear frames? Wait, are those prices real? Do they have glasses for men? Yep. They also have affordable blue light glasses. Seriously? At those prices? Get them all. I like where this is going. Zenni.com. Quality prescription glasses starting at $6.95.